Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca. I'm an ichthyologist, a freshwater biologist and also a PhD student studying lower chloride and pleco evolution, looking into morphology and stuff. But today I'm just going to talk about an aspect kind of like pathology, but I will, don't really want to go into pathology too much. But I'm going to talk about heater burns and whether they exist, uh, what kind of... Well, just talking about heater burns in general. So generally when you, um, when a fish has some sort of like small damage to the side of their body, top of their body to one of the fins, usually like a rub sort of mark, a lot of people will say it's a heater burn. And of course that heaters, they are producing heat obviously, and heat can cause damage if it's too hot and applied to a certain part of the body for too long. Um, and also general the tank being too hot or too cold or too hot would be more of the issue here but um, can cause issues but that's not really related to heater burns that's more related to the type of fish and also the setup and also whether the heat is functioning as it should but a lot of people will say that this damage is caused by a heater burn and why would it be a problem if it's not actually caused by the heater? Firstly, it's mis it could be misleading the actual, like, moving away from the actual true cause of the problem. A lot of damage to side of fishes could be from deck or maybe they've just rammed into it. Discus, goldfish, they're really prone to this. It could also be from territorial behaviour. And uh, for example, a lot of carids, they will, if they're going to ram into sides of each other, it can cause damage. Um, other, well, cichlids, other catfishes, um, many different groups can get damaged by those means. And both of those, including maybe um, also whether their hide is a bit too tight, or if they're actually sharing their hide with another species that might actually damage them. So I've seen clown loaches. Uh, with eel, uh, spiny eels, um, so that's same bank of forms, where obviously clown loaches have that um, spine around the head, so if they decide to lift that up and the eels will just ram themselves into a hide altogether and some of the clown loaches, that can cause damage. But also if you're keeping, uh, say, clown loaches who all want to be in the same hide with a lower card, which is really sharp, that can cause damage. So it's moving away from maybe the actual cause of the problem and maybe making people not think about what could be the cause of the problem. Another issue is many diseases might present themselves in similar manners or it could have been where one cut has um, got infected or some damage has got infected and then it's leading to like necrotic tissues um, where there's actually damage to the actual fish and um, through disease pathogens and that might need to be assessed as well using maybe different treatments um, or maybe thinking about or maybe thinking about how you're caring for the fish maybe water quality might be the issue but it's kind of moving away from the actual problem and make it something that it might not be and heater of course some fish could be getting damage from the heater but I'll tell you why it probably isn't going to be the main cause of the issue. So heaters, obviously, if it, a fish could get, so actually, I'll say why fit heated damage um, that is unlikely to occur. So fish are known to be able to, they have neurons, they are, or nerves, they can sense pain or pain as, because that we can't ask them do is that painful we can't that we can't it's difficult to say if it is pain or not more of a at a scientific context um but they do get discomfort from when those pain um receptors are triggered and also they're likely to have set temperature um uh, temperature receptors so they can also feel temperature like when you feel cold your receptors are telling your neurons to tell your brain that you feel cold and also it might also especially pain receptors might skip your brain altogether and you're going to move away from a painful um what's it painful stimuli so when you think about that if 
the heater is causing enough damage to burn off the skin, the fish should have moved away long before that because heaters aren't that hot. They're sort of like, it's not hot enough to burn you. Um, some heaters maybe are, but you're going to move away before there's going to be any substantial damage, especially when it's getting, um, because a lot of these fish, it's only sort of at this sort of level of like just the skin or even it can when people have their fish and it's mu it's gone below the skin into the muscular tissue for that amount of damage that fish would have been sitting there for a long time it, and should have experienced enough pain to make it go away that is not doesn't make sense and if the fish is getting heated damage in general there's probably something wrong with the fish because it's not feeling pain and it's not moving away so that's if it is caused by the heater which it probably isn't so the only situation i can see where heater would cause damage and the fish would not move away is if it's actually trapped behind the heater or under the heater and that's where it could cause more substantial damage so and that would really vary depending on the fish um to whether how it can move away if it can move away heaters aren't to the suction cups never last so hence mine are just laid there but most fish are going to be able to shove it out the way um any of the heaters especially if they're feeling that much pain they're going to move away of course texture unlikely are they going to get trapped by the heater probably not so easily you generally sit with catfish as loaches who aren't going to sit on the heater while they're feeling pain enough to damage tissues. Like you're not going to, unless you've got no ability to process pain, which does exist, fishes probably, they will have similar genetics um, to whether that some might not be able to feel pain, but the majority, it is an extremely beneficial response. Um, so like pain, it tells you there's a harmful stimuli you don't want to go near that whether it be toxins they're like fish can sense especially in water they'll be able to sense um different um vibrations um taste different things there's so many different stimuli they're good that many they're gonna actually want to keep away from as well uh, whether it be light um even or just different flow rates but pain they can feel pain or pain um and it's hugely beneficial too because you don't want to be on a stimuli that causes constant pain because you're getting d tissue damage and that's going to hamper your health or hammer your health it's also going to damage uh, whether you you're going to reproduce that year whether you're going to be able to escape from a predator because you've got damage obviously some it depends on why they're getting damaged obviously with territory behavior they're seeing it as it's worth getting hurt because i'm defending my spot and i'm more likely to get females i'm more likely to get food i'm more likely to get that space i'm more likely to get males it just depends on why but you can see why some behaviors are beneficial some are not some damage they see as i guess it's not they see personally but they it's worth it but getting stuck behind the heater where they are not feeling where they are feeling pain and they're gonna try and move away and if they're stuck behind the heater so much that they're getting tissue damage they're probably gonna be still stuck when you, you go back to the tank um, so I would move away from this heater burn thing there's more to it it's ignoring what the actual cause of the problem could be that might need researching and it's just not helpful uh, so I don't really like uh, do pathology much I'm an evolutionary biologist and morphologist so I can do stuff like anatomy and looking at that internal anatomy external anatomy I do mostly like skeletons I guess um, but there's some things that I think I'm fine to talk about uh, lymphocytes 
I would rather not. Um, same for uh, different viruses, different bacteria. I'd rather leave that to the fish pathologists who really have researched it. It's part of their topic, they need to know it and the specificity of different diseases. Um, before I would even go into detail, unless I could do it like a review of different papers though, I guess. Um, but I'd rather leave it to those who really know their topic when it comes to that. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please comment, like, subscribe, whatever. Um, and thank you.